Now let's talk about the two different types of mechanical advantage that we're going to be used going forward to characterize simple machines. The first one that we're going to talk about is ideal mechanical advantage. And that is what we call a theory-based calculation, which means in a perfect world without friction, without heat loss, without energy loss, this is what the mechanical advantage of a simple machine would be. So in this case, we are not taking friction or any outside forces into account. And what that amounts to is the only measurements we really need are distances. So your ideal mechanical advantage is looking at the effort distance divided by the resistance distance. So we don't need to have any force calculations at all whatsoever. We don't have to actually test out our machine. We just measure parts of our simple machine and automatically know what the ideal mechanical advantage is. Now in reality, we can't escape friction. We can't get away from heat loss. We can't get away from energy loss. And that's where actual mechanical advantage comes into play. So actual mechanical advantage is something that you're gonna actually have to dig into and experiment and collect that information. So that is when friction is taken into account. And the way that we do that is measure the effort force and the resistance force. So if I'm trying to lift a 100 pound object, that is my resistance force and the amount of force I need to put in is my effort force. So your actual mechanical advantage is gonna be a ratio between the resistance force and the effort force. Notice how that's flip-flop from your ideal mechanical advantage because we're messing with forces rather than distances. So we still have to take into account that work idea, uh, but for actual mechanical advantage, we need to actually figure out what is that force ratio rather than just pure distance ratio. So looking at our ramp, our overall goal is to get that box up to a certain height. So now we're gonna to toss some numbers in there, see if we can do some calculations based on IMA and AMA. So again, my goal is I need to get that box up to that pickup or wherever I need it to go. So the resistance force is gonna be the weight of that box and the resistance distance is where does it need to go from start to finish? Now I could hoof it up there, but I would rather use a ramp. So in using a ramp, my distance is increasing because I need to push it all the way up the ramp, but the force that I need to apply to that box is going to drop, which is represented by that 63 pounds. So let's calculate the IMA and let's calcu calculate the AMA and compare those two together. So I'm gonna pull the IMA equation that we need to do our calculations. And we know that it's our effort distance divided by our resistance distance. And I'm going to toss those numbers right in there, put them in my handy dandy calculator. I know inches cancel out because they're on the top and on the bottom. And I come up with an IMA of 4.59, which means if I were to put one pound of force in there, I should get around 4.6 pounds out of the deal. And that's pretty easy when we look at those two ratios. So let's do the same thing for AMA. If we pull the calculations for that and we take the resistance force divided by the effort force, I'm gonna plot those numbers in there from the example above. I know that pounds are on top, pounds are on bottom, so they cancel each other out. And I have an actual mechanical advantage of 1.58. So notice the IMA and the AMA are not the same. Our ideal mechanical advantage should be 4.59, but we're actually only getting an advantage of 1.58, which means something is going on. There must be some friction or some things that we're not taking into account, which leads us into our next idea called efficiency, where we can see how efficient is our machine in transferring or multiplying force. Now, our last idea is taking AMA and IMA into account to calculate the efficiency of a machine. So if you look at a machine, especially in the real world, you will never have a machine that's 100% efficient. So we need to calculate exactly how much energy is potentially being lost in what we're doing. So to calculate the efficiency of a machine, what you need to do is take the AMA, the actual mechanical advantage, the thing that you actually measure with forces, divided by the ideal mechanical advantage and multiply that by 
So you're taking what you're actually getting divided by what you're possibly getting times 100%. Now, keep in mind, if there is no loss due to friction, if we are in a perfectly ideal world, your AMA and your IMA will be the same. That's a big clue to a lot of problems. When you're actually doing projects, when you're actually measuring things, that's never ever going to happen. But that's a little bit of a clue to kind of jump between those, those two different equations.